I want to welcome the GMs and the wives, the godly men and the warm, inviting, feminine, empathetic women out there. So God will reveal your gifts when it is time for him to reveal them unto you. And anybody that is awakened in this life understands that to be awake is to realize that this whole life experience that we are in is really like a learning experience altogether. We are already in certain stages of life in which we're going to have to learn and grow. And, you know, we, we start going to public school when we're pretty young, at least most of us anyway. Some people are homeschooled. And obviously you go through certain grades, you go through certain levels. Anybody that's done martial arts understands that specifically uh, with Northern Shaolin Kung Fu, was, which was what I did, we started with the white belt, then the yellow belt, then orange, and so on and so forth, up until we got to black. And then there's certain degrees of, of the black belt that you can get where the ninth degree black belt is a master you are a worldwide master at that point. And so there's gonna be certain stages in life as well that you're gonna be going through. And when you go through certain stages, whether these are times of uncertainty or mystery, what I've begun to notice is that really we become most confused when there is something that God is giving us an opportunity to learn about that is both beautiful and horrifying. And so I want to read the fruits of the Spirit. Well, these are technically the gifts of the Spirit, I suppose. But this is uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10. It says, For to one is given the Spirit the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, is by that same spirit to another faith to another gifts of healing to another the working of miracles another prophecy and another the diverse kinds of tongues and then the interpretation of tongues so these are the gifts of the Holy Spirit and anybody that has been given gifts of any kind spiritually speaking understands that there's going to be certain people that show up in your life when you need them most, right? For some reason, this person just happens to come along at the right time that you need them, and the timing just seems to be outstanding. It's exactly what you're looking for. But you also didn't really expect it. And it's not necessarily that you didn't really know what to expect. You kind of did, but you also just weren't quite sure how to go about it. And so this is what's going to happen with some of the people that you meet in this life. Some of the people that you meet are going to be your spiritual colleagues, let's say, or your spiritual teachers, or your spiritual students in some sense as well, or just a brother or sister in spirit. Because the flesh is not necessarily as important as the heart. The heart being the embodiment of spirit so in the same way that the spirit cannot really live without the flesh the flesh can't really live without the spirit have you ever noticed that a lot of the people that are almost like vampires they the the, the spiritual energy vampires a lot of them are super duper pale in tone and they're not like necessarily white Okay, they're not like white or Caucasian. They're, they're just, they have this pale tone about their aura or their energy. And anybody that reads energy or understands energy can totally understand what I'm saying. But if you don't, you might be a little bit uh, confused. But understand that if you have the spiritual discernment to see this kind of spirit before you, usually they're narcissistic or they have some kind of personality disorder. In fact, I think most personality disorders are really just demonic possessions of people. I think that's really a bridge that we can compare and contrast with uh, between the psychoanalytical side of science 
and the spiritual side. And of course, the spiritual side is always going to be more important. And a lot of people think that the psychology side of, of things is a bit superficial. And I don't necessarily think that's the case. I think psychology is supposed to be the analysis of the spirit through the study and the examination of the psyche. So the more that we can understand the psyche, the more that we can understand how, how these things happen, how, how, how a spirit can actually be a spirit. You know, what exactly does it mean to be a free spirit? What exactly does it mean to be given the word of wisdom or the word of knowledge or these other gifts of healing or anything like that? Any of these kinds of gifts that you are being given, what exactly does it mean to live through and act out these spiritual gifts? Because a lot of people think that there's particular ways of life that are going to be better than others. And of course there are. But in all reality, it's, it's going to be what is your destiny and how does God prepare you for that destiny? And how do you walk it? Are you willing to walk that which is laid before you, that the, the path that God has laid before you? Are you willing to walk it? I remember when COVID happened, I had a particular dream and I was in a tornado slash hurricane, but it was on dry land. And there was all these people around me and there was this big, huge chair and it was just rising to the sky and there was a man that I couldn't quite discern at the top of the chair and all I could see was a finger pointing that way in the sky through the cloud and everybody else was going that way and you know they were going some other way but I had to go this way that was my, my interpretation in the in the dream so I began to walk this way that I was being shown and it was much more challenging. It looked like I was getting closer to the storm. It looked like I was getting closer to uh, the, the catastrophes of reality and really nature herself ever, ever so closely in, in burdening, burdening me with the reality of nature itself and herself. And so I earnestly went this way and there was a stunning figure on the other side, but I couldn't quite make it out. I couldn't quite make out this figure, but before I could see the figure, I had woken up and it was really a gesture of my story to come. It was more of like my dream was telling me that I'm going to have to go a way that a lot of people are not going. And this was, again, right after COVID. So I started to do a bunch of different kinds of research at this time. I had already been exposed to a lot of, you know, everything that's going on in the media or the, the lies, the manipulation, the Epstein stuff. Like I'd already been exposed to this kind of thing and George Soros and all that, Bill Gates. But I, I never really did the research. I never really did the research for myself. So I decided to do a lot of research in that kind of stuff because I wanted to know, like, what is going on? What is going on in the world? And the more that I started to dig, the more I started to understand my place in history. I didn't really understand my place in history up until I started to do my own research. And even when I began to read the Bible, I had never read the Bible before. The first time I read the Bible was nearly three years ago now and I, at least it was when I began to read it uh, I had read certain verses and such and I've heard certain verses but I'd never actually read it myself I never read through it page by page myself and so when I finally began to read the Bible and when I started to actually follow Christ because even though I had my spiritual awakening nearly six years ago now, I didn't actually start to follow Jesus up until 
three, two and a half, three years ago was when I began to be moved toward Jesus, but it wasn't until about two and a half years ago when I completely went full-fledged into Jesus and decided to completely follow him. And at that point, I was reading the Bible for hours and hours a day because it was almost like I was being shown things I already knew. And that's exactly what it's like to be receiving spiritual gifts. You might have had like these certain moments in your life where you get a glimpse of that gift. You get a glimpse of what that gift is going to be like when it matures. But right now it's a bit too underdeveloped and your mind is just not going to be capable of acknowledging and understanding what you're being given because you're just not quite ready for it. But when you're ready, God's going to give it to you and he's going to be able to show you exactly what you need and how you need it. And something that I've learned from, from Jesus is that he will never always, <laughs> it's a weird kind of usage of absolutes there, but he will never always give you, give you what you want, but he will always give you what you need. And even within the last few weeks for myself, I've had moments where I've wanted certain things but God basically says, well, do you need that, though? Do you need that? Do you really need that? Or do you think that you need that? And that's something that everybody, I, I don't know anybody that is not growing that is in Christ. Because if you're going to be in Christ and you're going to be walking with him, you're going to always be growing. You're going to always be maturing in other ways. You're going to always be moving up in levels. And it's kind of like the the martial arts belts, but for the kingdom of heaven. If you're a, a white belt or a yellow belt, meaning like a more beginner, when you are just freshly into Jesus and you are freshly following him, what is going to happen is you're going to be seeing some of the the red belts or the blue belts or the brown belts and you're going to think to yourself like holy moly that takes a lot of work and effort and conviction and commission com com commitment and and dedication and responsibility and accountability and and that can be kind of nerve-wracking for you because while you admire and respect the people that are there you are also thinking to yourself all of the work that's going to be having to be put in before you get to that point but God doesn't necessarily want you to think about that it's it's kind of like um, anybody played any kind of sport you play the sport play by play by play you don't play the sport thinking about the entire game otherwise you are going to lose because you're you're not in the moment you're not acting in the moment every time when you let's say you're playing basketball i don't know if anybody plays basketball here but i love basketball and if you're playing basketball and you've got the ball and you can make a couple of decisions you can pass the ball to that open guy over there you might be able to drive the ball up to get a layup but you're gonna have to make a decision and if you're thinking about instead of how to do something going forward you're thinking about oh, we're down by 10 points or 15 points. Like, I need, like, I can't, I, I, don't, I don't know how to do this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make the shot. If you start doubting yourself in the middle of the play, of course you're going to not be able to make it. Of course you're not going to be able to pass the ball where you need to or drive the ball up to get that layup. You're not going to be able to do it. But if you have trust in what you're doing and you have an understanding that, you need to be in the moment and not worry about that. Just take the ball by this play. And okay, I, I'm not, I'm probably going to be able to drive it up, but if I pass to this guy over here, he's probably going to have a better shot at making the shot. So I'm going to pass the ball and you make that decision. You make that decision or you make the decision to, to go lay it up. It, it, the point is, is that you're going to have to make decisions and the best thing about sports and martial arts exactly is that you have to learn how to make strategic decisions quickly because if you don't and and you're 
and with your body. So it's a psychophysiological uh, response and and movement altogether. You're connecting mind, body, and soul in the moment always. So you're going to have to make decisions quick, and this is going to be exactly like life. So when God gives you these gifts, when God gives you any kind of gift that you receive, and I do believe that we all have certain kinds of gifts. I haven't met one person, even though we're all very relatively the same and and we're all very similar in nature. Uh, we are also each very much unique. I haven't met a single person that I've been able to say, that person is exactly like that person. I've never been able to do that. And I don't think I ever will. It is my experience that each person that I meet has something different to bring to the table, even if they don't think so. And sometimes that thing to bring to the table, especially if it's like a narcissistic individual, what they bring is a lesson. And that is something that you have to acknowledge and accept as part of the life that we're living. But anyways, guys, I hope this message was useful and insightful. And until next time, peace be with you.